Hello friends, I welcome you in lecture number 6 on vector calculus. In this lecture, we will discuss how to find potential functions for conservative vector field. Uh, we have already discussed about conservative vector fields and potential function. We know that if our vector field f bar can be written as gradient of some scalar function say f which is a scalar function of three variables x, y, z provided our function f bar is also a function of three variables x, y, z. Then this scalar function f is called potential function for the vector field f bar which is conservative and we have seen how to test our vector field is conservative or not. So, if you have not seen lectures about conservative fields, I suggest you to watch lecture number 4 and 5 on the test for conservative vector fields. In this lecture, we are going to use this definition of potential function to identify or to decide the potential function for a given conservative vector field. So, we will see how to obtain this potential function in this lecture. Some authors are using this phi notation also for the potential function. So, whatever notation is given in the question, we will follow that notation for potential function. If nothing is given, we can use either f or phi or we can use our own notation also say h of x, y, z. So, in fact, our vector field is conservative if it can be written as gradient of some scalar function and that scalar function is called potential function. So, we start with this conservative vector field. Suppose that we have a conservative vector field with three component functions m and n p and uh, here our assumption is that our function is of three variables x, y, z. Therefore, this m and p are also scalar functions of three variables. Suppose f bar is a conservative vector field. Then by definition f bar can be written as gradient of some scalar function say f of x, y, z. Now on left hand side we put f bar equal to m into y plus n into j plus p into k and right hand side is gradient of scalar function f. So using definition of gradient we have right hand side is equal to del f by del x i plus del f by del y j plus del f by del z k. So, now we have two equal vectors. Therefore, uh, we can compare the coefficients of i j and k. Two vectors are equal if their components are equal. Therefore, m must be equal to partial derivative of f with respect to x. j components are n and partial derivative of f with respect to y so they must be equal and similarly this kth component which is p must be equal to kth component of this vector. Two vectors are equal if corresponding components are equal. We are interested in the scalar function f and we have obtained these three partial derivatives of scalar function f. So by solving these three equations we will be able to decide this potential function f of x, y, z. So, this we will understand with the help of this question which was asked in GTU summer 2019 exam for 7 marks. Generally, they ask, uh, always ask this type of question in the examination. We have to find out potential function for the given vector field if it is conservative. So, the question is check whether the vector field f bar equal to e to the power y plus 2z i plus x e raise to y plus 2z j plus 2x e raise to y plus 2z k is conservative or not. If yes, that is if f bar is conservative, find the scalar potential function phi of x, y, z such that f bar equal to gradient of that potential function. So, first we have to decide whether this is conservative or not and we have seen how to decide whether given vector field is conservative or not. We have discussed two results. One result was 
using curl of this vector field f bar another result was using partial derivatives of component functions and in both the results we require that this component functions must have continuous first order partial derivatives so here all these functions are containing exponential function and they are multiplied with polynomial functions and we know that exponential and polynomial functions are continuous everywhere and therefore their derivatives are here their derivatives will also be continuous derivatives of first order so it is obvious that this given vector field f bar has continuous first order partial derivatives so we should write here first what is given given that vector field f bar is e raised to y plus 2z times i plus let me check x into e raised to y plus 2z and 2x into e raised to y plus 2z x into e raised to y plus 2z j plus 2 times x e raised to y plus 2z times k and uh, we will write directly that clearly components of f we are writing that continuity condition clearly components of given vector field f bar have continuous first partial derivatives continuous first order partial derivatives so that condition is automatically satisfied first order partial derivatives now we check what is call of this vector field f bar if call is zero then our vector field will be conservative so now we find out call of the vector field f bar and we know that call is nothing but vector product of operator del with given vector field f bar and uh, first we write down first row as i j k second row is components of del operator which are partial derivatives with respect to x y and z and last row is components of given vector field which are e raised to y plus 2z x times e raised to y plus 2z 2x times e raised to y plus 2z and now we evaluate this determinant so we first find out determinant of this square matrix so this uh, de determinant of this 2 by 2 square matrix multiplied with i bar here derivative is with respect to y so we will consider 2x as constant derivative of e raised to y plus 2z is e raised to y plus 2z into derivative of y plus 2z with respect to y and that is going to be 1 so this is by chain rule minus partial derivative of x e raised to y plus 2z with respect to z so we keep x as constant again derivative is e raised to y plus 2z into derivative of y plus 2z with respect to z and that will be 2 so that 2 i write here so this is multiplied with vector i then we consider this vector j cap with negative sign and now we will take determinant of this 2 by 2 square matrix del by del x of this quantity minus del by del z of this quantity so first we write down partial derivative of this quantity with respect to x so we will consider 2 e raised to y plus 2 z as constant and derivative of x is 1 similarly derivative of e raised to y plus 2 z with respect to z is e raised to y plus 2 z into derivative of y plus 2 z with respect to z is and then this uh, this is multiplied with j bar and finally we have to consider this matrix which 
uh, which whose determinant will be multiplied with k bar so for k bar we consider determinant of this matrix partial derivative of x e raised to y plus 2 z with respect to x so e raised to y plus 2 z is constant minus derivative of e raised to y plus 2 z is e raised to y plus 2 z derivative with respect to y is e raised to y plus 2 z here we have written first derivative of e x e raised to y plus 2 z with respect to x so we consider e raised to y plus 2 z as constant and derivative of x is 1 minus derivative of e raised to y plus 2 z with respect to y which is e raised to y plus 2 z and now we can see all these quantities are negative of each other 2x e raised to y plus 2 z minus 2x e raised to y plus 2 z that is going to be 0 same thing here 2 e raised to y plus 2 z minus 2 e raised to y plus 2 z that is also 0 and these two also cancel each other so we can see that call of given vector field is 0 vector therefore given vector field is conservative so here therefore what we have obtained call of f bar is a zero vector therefore we have shown that f bar is a conservative vector field or simply f bar is a conservative field and now because f bar is conservative therefore we can write down f bar equal to gradient of some scalar function they are using phi notation for scalar function or scalar potential so we also this we also use the same notation phi for scalar function phi which is a function of three variables now we try to compare the components of these two vectors before that we write gradient of phi in this way and on left hand side we have to write down our vector our vector is e raised to y plus 2 z times i plus x e raised to y plus 2 z times j plus 2 x times e raised to y plus 2 z times k and by the definition of gradient gradient of phi will be equal to del phi by del x times i plus del phi by del y times j plus del phi by del z times k so we are substituting these two vectors f bar which is given vector field gradient of phi we have written by the definition now because two vectors are equal their components must be equal so by comparing the components here e raised to y plus 2 z will be equal to partial derivative of phi with respect to x that we write in this way partial derivative of phi with respect to x is e raised to y plus 2 z and we give this number 1 then components uh, j components so x e raised to y plus 2 z will be equal to partial derivative of phi with respect to y so x times e raised to y plus 2 z equal to del phi by del y and if we compare kth components here we have del phi by del z equal to 2 x times e raised to y plus 2 z del phi by del z equal to 2 x times e raised to y plus 2 z so we have obtained first order partial derivatives of scalar function phi now using three these three equations we will decide what is scalar function phi which is a function of three variables and we are having derivatives of this function with respect to x y z which are partial derivatives and so if i want to obtain function phi using equation one here I am having partial derivative with respect to x so to obtain phi 
I have to integrate del phi by del x with respect to x and at that time I will consider y and z as constants. Similarly, if I want to use equation 2 to write down scalar function phi, I have to integrate with respect to y partially considering x and z as constant and if we start with equation 3, we have to integrate with respect to z considering x and y as constant. So that is our choice with which equation we want to start. Uh, you can start with the equation in which integration is easy. Here there is no problem. We can start with any of these three equations. Integration is not going to be any complicated part. But here suppose we start with equation 1. So this is the next step. We integrate integrating equation 1 with respect to x on both sides but keep in mind we will consider y and z as constant so let's see what we obtain if we integrate with respect to x left hand side is partial derivative of phi with respect to x that we will integrate with respect to x equal to integral of e raised to y plus 2z with respect to x plus constant of integration so constant of integration may contain terms of y and z because we are integrating partially with respect to x so we will consider y and z as constant let me write integrating 1 partially with respect to x so our constant of integration can be a function of y and z so instead of writing simply capital C we will write constant of integration as a function of y and z say c of y and z always remember this whenever we are integrating with respect to one variable by considering other variables as constant then we must write constant of integration as function of those variables which we are considering as constant while integrating so therefore uh, left hand side is function phi itself phi of x y z here integral is with respect to x therefore y and z are constant therefore e raised to y plus 2 z is constant and integral of 1 with respect to x plus c of y z integral of 1 with respect to x is x so here we will obtain x so this is function phi of x y z but we still don't know what is this c as a function of y and z so to decide this c uh, we can use any of the remaining two equations we have not used these two equations del phi by del y and del phi by del z so if i want to use equation 2 i have to differentiate this equation with respect to y so that I can substitute value of del phi by del y and if I want to use equation 3 I have to differentiate this with respect to z suppose we differentiate this with respect to y differentiate and differentiation is partial differentiation so we write that differentiate partially with respect to y on both sides so we will consider remaining variables x and z as constant left hand side is partial derivative of phi with respect to y derivative is with respect to y therefore this x is constant and derivative of e raised to y plus 2z with respect to y is e raised to y plus 2z into derivative of e raised to y into derivative of y plus 2z with respect to y which is 1 so this is as it is x e raised to y plus 2z and because this is function of two variables we will write partial derivative of c with respect to y and now we use equation 2 we substitute value of del phi by del y from equation 2 which is x e raised to y plus 2z so that we write here therefore x e raised to y plus 2z equal to 
x e raised to y plus 2z plus del c by del y and you can see from this I will obtain del c by del y equal to 0. So this function capital C which is a function of y and z and its derivative with respect to y is 0 that means this function c can be a function of z only so here we write c equal to h of z for some function say h of z because its derivative with respect to y is 0 therefore we can write c as a function of remaining variable z so now we substitute this value of c in this uh, phi okay, we can give this number 4 so therefore function phi becomes phi of x y z equal to x e raised to y plus 2z plus c of y z x e raised to y plus 2z plus value of c which is now h of z because derivative of c with respect to y is 0 that means c is constant with respect to y so the remaining variable is z so now c can be a function of z or constant so now we have to decide what is this h of z so for that we are using equation number 3 which we have not used so far and equation number 3 is having partial derivative of 5 with respect to z which is 2x e raised to y plus 2z so to use this equation 3 we differentiate this last equation with respect to z partially so here we again write differentiate partially with respect to z on both sides so we have left hand side is partial derivative of 5 with respect to y equal to x is constant derivative of e raised to y plus 2z with respect to z is e raised to y plus 2z into derivative of y plus 2z with respect to z which is 2 plus now here we have function of z only so here we will have ordinary derivative dh by dz now we substitute here derivative is with respect to z okay, we are differentiating both sides with respect to z so here we don't know what is phi so we write del phi by del z x is constant derivative of e raised to y plus 2z is 2 e raised to y plus 2z plus this is function of z only therefore we write dh by dz and del phi by del z is 2x e raised to y plus 2z this we obtain from equation number 3 so here also i have to mention i am using equation number 2 here i have put value of del phi by del y from equation number 2 so here i write using equation 2 so we should mention whatever we are using so using equation number 3 we write del phi by del z equal to 2x e raised to y plus 2z and here also we have same quantity 2x e raised to y plus 2z plus derivative of h with respect to z so from this we obtain that dh by dz is 0 and now z is a func h is a function of z only therefore we must have h of z equal to some constant say c dash where c dash is a constant or c dash is an arbitrary constant it can take any value but now it is a constant value it is not function of any of the three variables so finally we have obtained that this h of z is c dash and that we can substitute here 
so that we will obtain our potential function phi of x y z is equal to x e raise to y plus 2 z plus c dash. So we can give this number 5 and uh, we can write that using h of z equal to c dash in 5 we obtain the required potential function using h of z equal to c dash in 5 we have phi of x y z equal to let me check again phi of x y z is x e raise to y plus 2 z x e raise to y plus 2 z plus c dash so this is required potential function for given conservative vector field f bar potential function for given vector field f bar so this is the answer to our question if you find out gradient of this scalar function phi you must get this vector field f bar so you can cross check your answer also you don't have to write this uh, cross check in examination but you can confirm yourself that your answer is correct whatever potential function we have obtained its gradient must be equal to given vector field so gradient of phi is del phi by del x times i plus del phi by del y times j plus del phi by del z times k and phi we have obtained is x e raise to y plus 2 z plus c dash so we can easily check partial derivative of phi with respect to x will be e raise to y plus 2 z into 1 so we have e raise to y plus 2 z only partial derivative with respect to y will be x constant e raise to y plus 2 z into 1 that is e raise to y plus 2 z plus partial derivative of phi with respect to z so again x is constant derivative of e raise to y plus 2 z with respect to z is e raise to y plus 2 z into 2 and times k and this is nothing but given vector field f bar so our answer is correct we can see here our function is e raise to y plus 2 z x e raise to y plus 2 z 2 x e raise to y plus 2 z so in this way you can answer this type of big questions easily you just have to remember the definition of conservative field so what we have done here first we show that given vector field is conservative for that we are using call of a vector field and uh, after that we are using the definition of this conservative vector field so because f bar is conservative it can be written as gradient of scalar function phi of x y z after that we are comparing the uh, components of both of these vectors we know that two vectors are equal if their components are equal so e raise to y plus 2 z is del phi by del x this x e raise to y plus 2 z is del phi by del y this is equal to del phi by del z and we obtain these three equations which are partial derivatives of required potential function so after that uh, we can start with any of these three uh, equations here we started by taking integral of this function with respect to x considering y and z as constant so integral of this function del phi by del x is phi of x y z equal to x e raise to y plus 2 z plus c of y z so be careful if you are integrating with respect to x your constant of integration will be a function of y and z suppose you are integrating with respect to y your constant of integration will be a function of x and z and if you integrate with respect to z you have to write constant of integration as a function of x and y now to determine this function of y and z uh, we are using remaining two equations so first we differentiate with respect to y and uh, using del phi by del y from equation 2 we find that 
this function c of y z has derivative zero with respect to variable y so it becomes constant with respect to y therefore it becomes function of z only or constant so then we substitute that value of c in that equation number 4 and we obtain phi in this form so still we don't know what is this function h of z so for that we are using third equation and we differentiate phi with respect to z and after substituting del phi by del z we find that dh by dz is also zero therefore h of z equal to c dash and c dash is an arbitrary constant it is not necessary that you will always have this uh, function as constant it can be a function of z also or function of x and y also depending on the given problem so once we obtain h of z we substitute it in the function phi and we are able to decide the potential function for vector field f bar and if you wish you can cross check your answer by finding gradient of potential function it must be equal to your vector field f bar if these two are not equal you have made some mistake and you can recheck your calculations so in this way we can easily answer this type of questions on finding potential functions for given vector field so this is all about this session i hope you like it thanks for